So good evening, everyone, and welcome to this webinar. Uh, we are delighted to invite you to an informative and thought-provoking webinar on waste management in India. Uh, the webinar aims to shed light on the pressing issues of waste management in our country and explore innovative approaches to address the challenges that we face. India, with its rapidly growing population and urbanization, is confronted with mounting waste management issues. It is crucial for us to come together, share knowledge, and discuss effective strategies to tackle this critical problem. Like during this webinar, we aim to delve into the complexities uh, of waste management, ranging from solid to e-waste and hazardous waste, and examine the environmental, social, and economical implications of those. Like, uh, even a recent event such as like in the Brahmapuram fire incident in Kerala is, was one of the reminder even for us to open a platform to create uh, more awareness on this issue. So understanding the importance and the need for more awareness on waste management, Sphere India Academy in collaboration with Hand in Hand India is organizing this webinar. We have gathered a distinguished panel of experts, including renowned researchers, practitioners, and policymakers who will share their insights and experience in waste management. They will discuss the current scenario, highlight the successful initiatives, and propose sustainable solutions that can be implemented in, at various levels. Uh, we hope that this webinar offers a unique opportunity for all of you to engage in meaningful discussion, ex exchange ideas, and explore collaborative approaches to create a cleaner and healthier environment. Uh, we look forward for your presence and active participation in this webinar, as together we strive to find uh, innovative and sustainable waste management solutions that can shape a greener and more sus sustainable future for India. So without any further delay, I'll uh, introduce other fantastic lineup of experts uh, who will be sharing the insights and experiences, uh, starting with Mr. Amudha Shegarin Nachiafil, uh, who is a senior vice president, Hand in Hand India. Also, he works as a managing director of Hand in Hand Inclusive Development and Services. Mr. Shekhar is experienced fans, education, monitoring, evaluation, and grassroots activities. He has worked on watershed management and renew renewable energy for rural areas. He heads HIH Inclusive Development Services Limited, our solid waste management arm, uh, rural development, organic farming, and also he works on promoting the FPOs. We welcome you to the session, sir. Uh, moving on, we have uh, Jodish uh, Chandran, sir, uh, who is a government official from Kerala, currently serving his position as Director of Solid Waste Management, Sujitva Mission Kerala. He has his uh, like degree in environmental engineering, and he's been currently working for with Sujitva Mission for the past five years. So Sujitva Mission is a technical arm. Um, of Department of LSD, Government of Kerala, and is responsible for evolving implement, implementation strategies, providing policy in the sector of sanitation and management of various solid and liquid waste. Uh, moving on, we have uh, Dr. Chippy Mohan. So Dr. Chippy Mohan is an accomplished uh, assistant professor specializing in disaster resilience with PhD in management, an MBA and an MA in economics. Her academic credentials are impressive. Dr. Mohan has authored 10 academic books covering diverse topics such as disaster management and economics alongside a collection of poems. Her research contribution in disaster resilience includes topics like disaster and community resilience and disaster preparedness uh, and have been cited 144 times, reflecting their relevance. Uh, Dr. Mohan's H index of seven underscores the impact of her research. Additionally, she has completed over 10 additional courses and is sought after speaker at conferences and seminars. We welcome you also to the session, ma'am. Thank you, Hannah. Yeah, moving on, uh, we have uh, Mr. Sudhalai. Uh, Sudhalai Subramaniam, he, as a profession, he works as an assistant professor at Center for Pollution Control and Environmental Engineering, and also works as senior public health engineer in the public health department, ECC division, Larson and Turbo Private Limited. He has his studies in MTech in environmental engineering, and also his research uh, 
interest spans over sustainable development, citizen science, science, air pollution, solid waste management, sanitation, traditional knowledge on sustainable sustainability, biofuel and biomass valorization. He also uh, have received Sri Gangara Memorial Award 2022 for the article on renovation of waste uh, into valuable biochar, a study on the uh, utilization of solid waste by pyrolysis by Institution of Engineering in India. He also works. Uh, he also works as a consultant for government, private organization, and also several NGOs. We welcome you also to the session, sir. Uh, Moving on, we have uh, our next speaker, speaker, Anjali Agarwal. She is a mechanical engineering graduate from Odisha, uh, embarked on her professional journey with Pradhan, an NGO working with women self-help groups to generate livelihood opportunities in impoverished regions of India. She served with Pradhan from 2015 in Odisha and then in Chhattisgarh till 2020. Anjali later joined Waste Warriors in Uttarkashi. Uttarkashi district as an outreach manager, facilitating collaboration and capacity building for sustainable solid waste management across 42 villages. Currently, she serves as the project manager for the villages of Govind Life Wildlife, Govind Wildlife Sanctuary, spearheading a sustainable solid waste management model under Project Jeep. We welcome you also to the session, ma'am. Uh, lastly, we have our moderator, Ms. Varsha Chaudhary, a humanitarian professional. Uh, she is currently working uh, as a research associate in Spear India. Prior to working in Spear India, she has been associated with various projects of MOVA, including Swachh Bharat Mission, being part of the project management unit on uh, Swachh excuse me, switch Sarvekshan 2019 and 2020, under which she has worked with various state governments, helped and guided them through the City Cleanliness Monitoring Index that was later on developed into a cleaner city nationwide ranking. We welcome you also, uh, Vasha, to the session. So without any further delay, I'm all excited to get into the session. So I would like to hand over it to Vasha, like our moderator, to take it forward. Thank you so much, Hannah. Despite being unaware, you are here moderating and hosting the session. And so thank you for introducing. Now, on behalf of Swear India, like already Hannah has already uh, introduced me. I'm Varsha Chaudhary and I work as a research associate with Swear India. And on behalf of Swear India, I would like to welcome all the panelists and the participants today for a panel discussion on towards sustainable world through effective waste management, uh, where we all will be sharing the learning uh, and experiences. So specifically today, as even if we look out side of our window, especially, uh, specifically in Delhi NCR region, there's a dust storm. And these uh, dry winds often lead us to various disasters like the fire incidents. And one, very recent example of the fire incident was the Brahmapur, um, Brahmapuram fire incident that happened in the waste plant of uh, Kerala. And it was an environmental disaster that happened in March uh, in around a 110 acre of land and uh, left people of, uh, people of Kochi choked with toxic, toxic air. And incidents like these are motivate us to gather together and to have a collaborative approach or discourse on such matters and how inadequate waste management, what are the challenges and what are the approaches that we should follow. So moving on to this, uh, to guide uh, further to this topic, I would like to invite Mr. Amruta Shekharan from, uh, he is a senior vice president with a hand in hand. And so we welcome you and invite you to further lead this discussion, wherein, um, like we already know that Hand in Hand has been working in solid waste management since 2007. And so we would like you to uh, enlighten us on to, or guide us on to what are the importance of effective waste management in the current scenario and how we can contribute towards building a sustainable future. Secondly, what are the immediate emergent trends in innovation based management and how can we scale up these approaches further all across the regions of India? So you can read the discussion now. 
thank you so much, uh, Swarta and uh, um, uh, Hena. Uh, it's a good opportunity for us to uh, like, uh, see each other and uh, uh, discuss each other about the vital issues the country is facing. Uh, of course, uh, it's a vital issue because we have created for ourselves. So that is what is happening. And um, it, is, it is always, uh, if you see, there are um, uh, countries, they plan much ahead of next 20 years, how they, what, what is their um, standard of living and how infrastructure facilities should be there. What are the inventions should be there for next uh, uh, 20 years, 25 years, 50 years and all. But unfortunately, you all know it's nothing new for uh, 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 to say. The solid waste management rules of 2002, the by name itself, it came in 2002. But unfortunately, at the time, many of the organizations doesn't know what the rule says as such. In fact, when we started in 2007, a small way, when I met a couple of uh, local body members, they said that hey, we are all fine, everything is okay, we have the waste management, we are doing it. But when we say that how you are doing it, they say that, oh, yeah, we collect it and dump it and we burn it and whatever it is that's all. So this is the scenario everywhere. Uh, it was a surprise to me. Even, uh, of course, I'm not surprised anymore. The thing is, uh, the, the government itself is uh, taking so much of challenges because it is, uh, a, we should not blame government also because the system is like that, slowly it moves on. And uh, the country like in, in, in India, it is a challenge. And uh, um, uh, of course, now if you look at it, uh, the Swachh Bharat in a place, a lot of uh, changes are taking place. The rules are in place. The rules are revised it. And we are in the uh, process of going the correct direction. But only thing what we need is, we need speed. And we need everyone's stake in that. So that is how we have to take. And even though rules are far line with the, um, the European countries and the developing countries, but implementation level, how far we are progressing. That is very much important. That is what we can able to say. Can you just uh, uh, put the um, presentation so that we can uh, take on, will not take much time. And uh, uh, within the time we can able to just uh, uh, share our experience because we worked started from 2007 onwards. So just I wanted to share my experience with you all, with you all so that it may be useful to you. Because we started our uh, solid waste management activities in a way, um, way back 2007. So basically hand in hand inclusive development and services is a, a sister concern of uh, hand in hand India. Hand in hand India is a, um, a charity organization works in 22 um, uh, st uh, states in India and also abroad. Hand in hand inclusive development and services are registered in a section eight company, ATG totally we have. So we work with uh, corporates for CSR activities. Our major progress on environmental activities. Next slide. Yeah. So uh, the topic is uh, the importance of uh, solid waste management at uh, the present time. So uh, most of us know that uh, um, now what is solid waste management? We need not uh, tell again that. But however, we should know that uh, the effective solid waste management, we should believe in fact, certainly brings the protection to environment, particularly from the pollution and the contamination. This is our experience and it is uh, definitely uh, true also. And also the effective solid waste management, uh, if you look at it, this will bring the circular economy and also creates a more uh, employment opportunity to the uh, trout garden people. And also there are a lot of opportunity, new avenues are coming up in the line. So one side it is uh, protecting the environment, the other side it uh, supports the uh, economy itself and also the employment opportunity. And the third aspect, if you look at it, it is a safety aspect. Even though uh, our country is uh, so uh, diversified and uh, um, the disparity is uh, high, the safety is important. And uh, so much of uh, the powerful social media, now everything is taking uh, much faster. In this scenario, uh, the safety aspect of everyone is very important. 
that as you rightly said, the Brahma Brahm incident, everybody knows. It is uh, not only Brahma Brahm, and also several towns and cities you will find this. When, the, when it comes to the um, summer season, you find even in Chennai, if you look at it, uh, the, uh, the, um, uh, there's a two big dump yards like in Chennai. It's, uh, um, uh, in the biggest one is in uh, uh, Kodungayu, that's about 350 acres of land, completely hills of uh, 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 dump sites. And once they started firing, and it goes the uh, hill like it. Now people are aware and uh, uh, people are not allowing um, others to dump it in their, their own villages. But however, the legacy waste because challenge how we are going to do it. So the safety aspect is very important. That has to be, it's a great lesson from uh, for everyone uh, from the uh, Brahma Brahma incidents and even the, their own site also. And uh, the effective waste management practices will improve the local economy. And also the the earlier when we were working, many people, the particularly the uh, the tourism places, will be very happy. And uh, once the cities are clean and tourists are coming more, it attracts the tourists and the uh, internal economy grows up and uh, the neatness um, spreads all over the uh, places. So that is uh, very impact on ground you can able to see. Many of the uh, tourist places like Mamalapuram and uh, many other places, the same case, and people are expecting the similar one. And uh, very important thing is the green strategy or whatever we develop the, uh, the government norms that we have to uh, uh, follow very strictly. This is what uh, is very important. We have everything in hand, the technologies are there, but how best we are implementing it is a big question. Can you go to the next slide? And the waste management contributing towards a sustainable future, this is an important factor. Unless until you improve your facility, improve your infrastructure, the development will not come. And also that the sustainable development won't come at all. And uh, um, I remember that way back in 20, uh, nearly about 25, 30 years back, I have implemented a central rural sanitation program. That is a toilet schemes in the rural areas. Even now we are talking about a rural sanitation program. The last 25 years, 30 years, still we are the same activity we are continuing. What is the impact now? Because the government is taking up so uh, strong and there are lots of improvement. And also the, uh, the girl children are educated. So it is all, uh, they are coming forward and they are going ahead. Earlier it was given a grand mode and people started rejecting it or they use it in a different way. Now they go for even for getting loan and they are constructing the toilets. That is the impact take place. But it has to come much faster, not even after 25 years. But uh, I strongly believe that this waste management, now after Swachh Bharat initiative, definitely it is a, uh, uh, what you call, it's a uh, very impactful uh, program. We should uh, take the chance and we are the stakeholders. We have to take it much faster so that it will be successful in minimum years. That is what we have to take. We should not take another 25 years. It should, it should be much faster. So that is why we say the sustainable waste management definitely brings a lot of development. It is a chain reaction. It is not only the, the, um, uh, producing any product too and um, uh, uh, any other development, it is the same. Can you go to next slide, please? Yeah. Um, some of the strategy, which is uh, uh, what we practiced, I can uh, share with you. Uh, the effective uh, and efficient uh, waste management means um, the continuous awareness is required. The continuous awareness among the people creates the behavioral change because the behavior change is very important. That's what I could able to see. Uh, uh, once in an NGO or somebody is successfully implemented a five years uh, project, it should go by automatically. But unfortunately, it goes back to the uh, day one. So that should not happen. So the behavioral change aspect is very important that we have to focus. Of course, uh, we are doing it and very uh, several organizations, uh, organizations are doing. The behavior change, various stakeholders is important. And another thing is we, we seriously, we talk about source segregation, which is uh, extremely difficult, but it is possible. Once uh, five years back, when we talk about, five or 10 years back, when we talk about, 
people are the official say that no no when you are doing in a small way it is fine but a bigger uh, organization like municipality corporate it cannot be done and all now it is possible in chennai it is taking place right now in chennai um, uh, many places it is taking place it is uh, no more collection and dumping of contracts it is uh, the contract based on the swachh bharat guidelines based on the very uh, various uh, categories the payment is made so such things should come up that will result really a, a, a good impact good result expected result will come so uh, that is why we say that the source segregation and uh, um, the collection efficiency also important factor many places uh, uh, i have heard a couple of uh, um, articles and i have seen many places the collection efficiency itself is not there even now that has to be taken up and uh, improved infrastructure transport of course there is another uh, uh, big thing that we have to do and uh, effective processing uh, system all these aspects when you take up uh, the scientific disposal mechanism is a big subject we have to talk a lot and lot but however i want of time just i am giving you a few uh, important things when we do this definitely we can able to make a lot of uh, uh, changes the adequate implementation support from the policy makers is very very important that is the main uh, uh, thing we have to take it up and for them uh, to give a pressure the government authorities i know there are hundreds of hundreds and hundreds of government authorities with uh, uh, you know, full of energy they want to do it i have seen in kerala also there are a lot of people are interested and even the public are interested we have to make use of that and it can be successful one next slide please sir can you just uh, like we have a few more speakers and yeah, yeah, very yeah, short yeah. duration everything yeah yeah next next slide please go ahead next slide yeah yeah i have uh, you can you can go to next also it's no problem this is a karikal experience we have done six years we have done karikal and nearly about 25000 household as per the municipal solid waste management rules successfully we have implemented that was really a, a, a successful one we got uh, several appreciation and uh, particularly in this uh, uh, project uh, the waste management uh, innovations are very important and every day there there is a new innovation is coming but unfortunately all the innovations are not successful of course we have to it is a trial and error method we have to do it and the composting we have a uh, various technologies that has to be uh, implemented and collection mechanism again that uh, new technology like instead of fuel uh, the uh, fossil fuel we have to go for uh, um, uh, the battery vehicles and uh, have a tracking mechanism and segregation and uh, waste free to uh, dust free we have to make so that is the the uh, concept we have to take it up can you go to next slide please yeah uh, some of the recommendations if you look at it um the uh the the existing um, dump yards has to be uh, protected properly and uh, uh, the, the the waste should be properly uh, disposed so that we can we can uh, minimize the waste to go to dump yard that is first thing second thing is uh, the legacy waste has to be completed by the bio mining or any other new technologies that has to be done uh, so that uh, this type of uh, uh, issues we will be able to stop and uh, existing uh, uh, particularly existing uh, uh, dump sites has to be at least uh, covered with the covering up and uh, um, uh, tight security systems and a lot there are various methods we can use this is how we can do and the standard uh, protocols as per the pollution control board and uh, msme rules we have to follow then absolutely no problem it can be done i strongly believe we can make a zero waste uh, uh, waste management uh, uh, it is a possible thing only thing is with various stakeholder support it can be possible and continuous effort has to be uh, required for this so uh, next slide yeah i think uh, this is what uh, uh, my side there are various technologies available there are new technologies are emerging every day there are good technologies and there are some technology it is not useful at all but it is a trial and error method we have to go ahead the foremost thing is 
uh, the various stakeholders with full heart, we have to get into that. And it is successful one. And thank you so much for the opportunity. Of course, it's a very big subject. I just, uh, whatever we, are, we have experienced, we have shared with you. You can ask if any questions if you need, or we can go to the next one. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. As rightly said by you, uh, like we have already initiated a lot of processes through the Swachh Bharat mission or the Solid Waste Management Rules 2016. Yet we need to work a lot on the implementation and the uh, collaborative effort of all the stakeholders. And moving ahead with this uh, discussion, I would like to invite Mr. Jyotish Chandranji. Directors, uh, Solid Waste Management, Suchitra Mission, Government of Kerala. Sir, if you can share with us your observations with respect to the Suchitra Mission and with uh, what, according to you, have been the key contributing factors to the Pramapuram fire and how has it impacted the health and uh, environment of the Kerala or the Kochi city? And what were the lessons learned? If you can give a brief description or your observation on these subjects. Good afternoon, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Uh, Kerala, you know, actually it's a densest populated state in India. That means the, the density population is around double that of the other states. Mm -hmm. And uh, another aspect is actually uh, the availability of vacant land. Because here, I think we have 941 Gram Panchayat and uh, 93 urban local bodies. But the 1,041 local bodies are functioning states. But the major problem we are facing is actually we are not able to establish such uh, centralized plans. That means we are actually uh, doing some decentralized methods, uh, especially for bio wastes. That means uh, we are actually providing composting and biomedication devices to the households with a 90% subsidy. That means we are encouraging the people to do the um, composting and biomedication process in their premise itself. By that way, we can, uh, like that means the uh, usage of centralized plants we can avoid. And then Brahmapura, I think it's a, actually uh, 104 acres land and uh, there we have one uh, windrow compost plant catering uh, nearly 250 tons of waste per day. Uh, it is not alone from Kochi Corporation, but from five municipalities and uh, three uh, panchayats, Gram panchayats, the fire waste are being um, uh, forward linked to this um, plant, and uh, the winter plant, winter composting is going on. And uh, I think uh, for the past uh, many years, the mixed waste actually we are now promoting segregation. That without segregation, we can't do anything with this uh, management. So now we are actually promoting segregation. That is, segregation and O and M are the two fundamental principles of waste management. But the legacy waste, we have more than 24, 30 dump sites we have. And the major one was actually Brahmapuram, where actually uh, more than 5 lakh uh, metric tons of uh, legacy waste was dumped there. And uh, the, dump, the bio mining process was also uh, doing there. But unfortunately, uh, this uh, fire incidents happened and uh, it was last long for uh, one week. And uh, some problem happened there anyway, but we could uh, uh, address that issue. Um, now I think uh, it is under control and uh, uh, the primary process is going on there. Uh, the other issue we are facing is uh, the bio non-bio waste. That means uh, as per our policy, Kerala waste management policy, 77 percentage is wet waste and uh, remain 23 percentages um, dry waste, including rejects. That means uh, around 18 percentage of the um, waste produced is dry waste, that means plastic and other things. For that, we have a mechanism. That means we have green task force. It's actually a self-help groups of Kudumbasri. And these um, women self-help groups, they are visiting the houses and collecting the uh, non-dry waste from the houses after uh, using user fee. That means uh, in rural area, they are getting 50 rupees per household, and uh, in urban area, they are getting 100 rupees uh, per household. And institutional also, they are getting money. So with, with, with this, they can uh, function uh, comfortably in Kerala. That means we have uh, more than 1,000 material collection facility centers and resource recovery facilities, everything we have. 
and we have a Kringala company that is a government owned company and they are actually dealing with the collection and transportation of uh, non bio waste. But this legacy waste actually it was happened in I think in almost all city uh, this legacy waste uh, dumps are there. Um, and the fire happened actually it was just, uh, this mixed waste was there and this mixed waste contains methane that means wherever this um, bio waste is there it generates methane also. So uh, the fire um, happened and uh, um, it was not easy to extinguish the fire because of this methane. Uh, and um, uh, many days, we took many days to um, to make control uh, this fire. Uh, it is actually uh, around uh, 100 hectares land. Uh, and uh, uh, this dump site is uh, not in Belmore alone, but uh, I think in almost all municipalities, we have dump sites. In, in Kuala Corporation, we already cleared uh, 1,20,000 tons of metric tons of legacy waste already cleared. That means by uh, segregating into different materials, more than 12 categories of materials we have divided and uh, this, all these materials are reused. That means uh, this uh, RDF, the main thing is RDF and the main problem we are facing in Kerala is we have no cement factory having core processing facility. That means that's another challenge we are facing. That means we are actually taking all this RDF to the neighboring states. That means either uh, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka or Andhra Pradesh. We have only one cement factory, it's Malabar cement factory, and this cement factory has no processing facility. That's another challenge we are facing. That means in North India, I think uh, we can address this by mining by way of, I think, 550 rupees per metric ton. The Sushibharad mission is also uh, annotating 550 rupees per metric ton. But in Kerala, we need to spend more than 1,000 rupees per metric ton because of the non availability of um, cement factory or any waste energy plants in Kerala. That's another, and that's the problem we are facing to clear dump sites. That means we have to spend 1,100 rupees per metric ton to clear the dump sites. And uh, these local bodies are actually uh, having their own problem to address this issue because of this uh, money and uh, this the enhanced um, uh, per, cap, uh, per uh, ton uh, cost. So that's the main issue. And anyway, we are actually uh, have the plan to uh, clear the all the dump sites. That means more than 30 dump sites we have in urban local bodies and uh, we already plan to clear all the waste within a, a um, uh, time-bound manner. That means within six months we can clear um, nearly 50 percent of the legacy waste and uh, by the end of this year we could finish the entire um, biomining sites. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing your uh, experience with the Thermophilin fire. And we think that it would work with the uh, uh, Kerala local bodies and how, what is the difference between the so south and north side of things and how we can identify and adopt these approaches. Thank you so much for sharing. Moving ahead, we'll, uh, I'd like to uh, invite Dr. Chippi Mohan, Professor, T. John College and Ma'am, since your research focuses on disaster preparedness and community resilience, I would like to ask uh, your observation and on how can we improve the waste management systems in Kochi to prevent dis uh, disasters like these? And, and how can we scale up these approaches to other regions of India? And in your viewpoint or in your observation, are there any specific tools or technology available for improving the waste management systems in India. Over to you. Thank you for the question, Bosha. Good evening, y'all. Since uh, we are running out of time, I'll make sure that I'll take uh, I'll not take much of your time. Today, I would like to I would like to address the issue of waste management in Kochi and the lessons we can apply to disaster prevention strategies in other regions of India, particularly to prevent incidents like tra the tragic Brahmapuram fire. The Brahmapuram fire incident in Kochi was a tragic event that happened on 31st of March 2023 and which resulted in a significant loss of property. In the aftermath of the disaster, there has been a growing recognition of the need of the effective disaster prevention measures to minimize the risk of similar incidents occurring in future. And I have also done a study to explore the uh, lessons that can be learned from the Brahmapuram fire incidents to inform the future disaster prevention strategies. 
And on, as I had said earlier, on March 31st, 2023, a massive fire broke out at the Brahmapuram based disposal uh, center in Kochi, which we have to consider as a, uh, as a uh, uh, study or whatever we have had for the one week, all the residents were in, impacted. So we should consider that incident as an example uh, to rectify all the disaster management methods we are following right now. So first and foremost, a comprehensive waste management plan needs to be devised and implemented. This plan should focus on uh, um, some of the key areas like segregation at the source, as Joseph uh, Sir already discussed, proper uh, segregation of waste at the household and commercial levels needs us to be implemented and it is very crucial. Then effective collection and transportation and an effective waste collection and transportation system is vital to prevent waste accumulation and minimize the risk of such fire ac accidents. Then advanced waste treatment facilities. Instead of relying on solely on landfilling, Kochi and other places should invest on advanced waste treatment facilities like composting plant, biogas plants, or waste to energy facilities. Then awareness and education. Public awareness campaigns and educational programs are, uh, should be des uh, designed and is essential to promote responsible waste management practices. Then monitoring and enforcement. Strict monitoring and enforcement of waste management regulations are critical to ensure the compliances. As uh, Joe, this sir was in, uh, saying, in Kerala, we have uh, Kudumbasri to collect the waste. Even, even though they are doing their maximum to support the, uh, the government, there are some people who need some awareness regarding the waste management, who will say, we'll uh, burn off the waste at home. We'll, we are not ready to dispose to you. So that kind of mentality also should be awarded. Now, what lessons can we, uh, can we learn from the uh, Brahmapuram fire incident and apply to the disaster prevention strategies? in other regions of Ke uh, India as well as in uh, Kerala. First, I will say it will be risk assessment. That is conducting a comprehensive risk assessments of waste management facilities is crucial and it is needed. That is, that is we have to identify the potential hazards and vulnerabilities that allows the implementation of preventive measures and the development of contingency plan. Then fire safety pro protocols. Adequate fire safety measures should be put into, practice, into place in waste management facilities, including fire alarms, extinguishing system, and emergency evacuation plans. Regular training of the pers personnel on fire safety protocol is essential. Then emergency response plan. Developing robust emergency response plan is essential to minimize the impact of any disaster. These plans should outline the roles and responsibilities, communication channels, evacuation process, and coordination with relevant authorities as well. And the last one would be private, public and private partnerships. That is a collaboration between the government, private sector, and the local communities is a crucial for effective waste management and the disaster pre uh, prevention. Engaging the stakeholders, that is the ultimate people or the people of Kerala or any other place in decision making process and sharing the responsibilities will lead to a better outcome. In conclusion, I would say improving the waste management in Kochi and preventing incidents like Brahmapuram fire requires a multi faceted approach by implementing comprehensive waste management plans raising awareness, investing in adv advanced treatment facility and enforcing regulations. We can mitigate the risk associated with improper waste disposal and the lessons learned from such incidents should be applied to disaster prevention strategies in other regions of India as well as world. A world I will not say because we have we can see in development developed countries, they have better waste treatment plans. We can't even see a, 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 a citizen from other country putting a littering around. They will be, they are having proper waste management everywhere. And even the citizens are highly responsible. And together we can build a cleaner, safer and more sustainable future for our cities and our nation. I hope this initiative by Spear India is giving, uh, is going to give more awareness to the people. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. 
rightly said that this uh, the, such incidents require a multifaceted approach and lessons from these shall rightly be uh, incorporated into the disaster management strategies and approaches that are prepared at the national central level. Moving forward, uh, I would request Professor Sudhadai Subramaniam Ji, Assistant Professor, Pondicherry University, to... Sir, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Sir, Good afternoon I would like you. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Uh, thanks for this opportunity. Uh, sorry, I couldn't join in the beginning because of network connectivity. Uh, I'm really sorry for that. Uh, the topic uh, for me is uh, waste management policies and practice to be aligned with uh, broad sustainable initiatives. Right now, I'm in computer center. Probably uh, you may have some cross noise also. I'm sorry. Uh, I came from my department to computer center uh, for the connectivity issue. So um, I'm, uh, I'm sorry if any noise comes in the between. That is absolutely okay, sir. We are here to listen to your uh, observation. That will that will not be an issue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm, I'm sharing my uh, entire screen. I hope my screen is uh, visible to all. Yes, sir. So the topic given for me is this one. How can waste management policies and practice be aligned with the broader sustainability initiatives such as circular economy, renewable energy, and climate change mitigation? How can traditional knowledge on sustainability improve waste management practices? It's a very uh, broad topic. Uh, there are different aspects I need to discuss, like how waste management policies, uh, like uh, uh, we have solid waste management rules, after 2016 onwards, we have more enforced rules. Uh, thanks to Almitra Patil, uh, ma'am has created a lot of uh, uh, interest in solid waste management, implementation of waste management rules and policies from all the state uh, governments as well as union territories. So every uh, state government was asked to make policies regarding the uh, solid waste management and uh, have a budgetary uh, requirements also for solid waste management. Before that, it may not be appreciable. But still, even after the policies are started coming in and uh, the implementation of policies have a lot of difficulties. So we started working on some of the uh, difficulties faced by the Pondicherry uh, municipality. Pondicherry have two municipalities. One is Ulgarit municipality, other one is Pondicherry municipality. We have other village panjayats. So majorly all the waste collected from the uh, uh, the Pondicherry region, it's uh, it's uh, going to be common uh, uh, landfill. So uh, we started analyzing what are all the uh, daily fluctuations because uh, when we when we plan for a waste management system, we need to work on uh, daily fluctuations of waste generation and what kind of waste and which what are all the hotspots. So this is the first uh, initiatives we have taken, and we understood that. Uh, uh, like uh, the, the waste uh, generation rate is little fluctuating. I hope I, I can share those pictures if required. Um, uh, shall we go ahead with the uh, data if required? I didn't know about the time. So if, uh, if it is not possible, I'll cut short the presentation. So I leave the choice Sorry. to the organizer. If you want to see some of the data, which we collected from the Pondicherry, I'll share those. If not, I'll skip those. Uh, I, I, I leave the choice to the organizer. So since time is limited and we have okay. to close this session by four, uh, we can share this uh, as a collateral later on with all the participants and the okay. panelists. Okay. So I hope uh, my screen is visible. I'll, I'll make it very short. So uh, these are all the fluctuations. Every month, every week, the total waste generation is uh, not uh, uniform. We have different, different waste generation rates. And especially on uh, Sunday and uh, Tuesday, we have a lot of uh, tourism uh, coming into Pondicherry region. So those days, waste generation rates are a little difficult. It means same number of vehicles are there, but the problem is waste generation rate is more. So they have to spend more uh, manpower as well as uh, more vehicle. But the problem is same road is there. On Monday, we have regular traffic and other things. So uh, the waste generated perhaps maybe more, uh, but we are not able to uh, transport and collect all the things on the same day. So that leads to littering and leakages and uh, Pondicherry's region uh, is very close to beach coastal region, so marine uh, 
uh, transportation, the waste is transported to marine environment very faster. So already we have known about uh, ocean-bound plastics and importance. So Pondicherry plays a major role in ocean-bound plastics. So uh, we need to have to, I mean, we need to be a little more cautious than other states. All marine related states ought to be very careful. Uh, Brahmapuram incident is an another uh, eye opener for everyone. Uh, many places still it has not been noticed. Many dump sites have been burned every day, and uh, there are several accidents take place which is not accounted very properly. So uh, even the transportation stage. Uh, we are talking about dump site uh, risk management and also we need to think about how we are collecting, how they have been transported. I'll show some pictures I wish to really uh, feel that is very important for us to understand, like how we are taking the waste. Uh, uh, once again, once again. Yeah. So this is the picture of entire Pondicherry waste generation, right? And we have this much amount of quantum. And uh, these are all the vehicles used for uh, uh, transportation. And this is how the system has been uh, implemented. And uh, some difficulties are there since uh, uh, implementation of policy and the related problems we discussed, then only we can find the solutions. Even the right now situation, you can see the height difference. These are the, uh, I mean, I hope my screen is visible to everyone. Shall I continue? Uh, I, I just take few seconds yes, from I'll yes, finish sir. talk. Yeah. So this is very important issue I felt, uh, like uh, this is the uh, uh, I mean, baskets they are collecting from individual houses. So uh, after collecting this being transported to secondary uh, collection vehicle, so you can see the lady and the height difference, she need to lift this basket and discharge it over here. So it's not possible. So she need to climb on this, then she will lift this, then she will discharge it over here. So this is uh, 60 liter basket, I believe so. so uh, she's finding a lot of difficulties in that. Then uh, during nighttime, silt formation is more on the road. So that also to be removed like this same way. And you can see the lady, she need to lift from here to here. She need to transport, I mean, I mean lift that. So Rula and Reba, which talks about the difficulties of uh, musculoskeletal issues. So uh, we are just focusing only on dumps. Uh, but uh, dumps have several problems, but reaching the waste to the dump site is also a problem and where they are traveling and how they are uh, basic uh, needs of those uh, sanitary workers also under questions. So there are several uh, parts we have to work on. So uh, I, coming, I come to the sustainability part of it. Uh, until we create a circular economical, uh, I mean circular economic scenarios, it is not possible. We have to bring economical or commercial interest on the solid waste. So involving the rack pickers or uh, involving, uh, uh, we should not stop by saying involve them. How to involve them? That's a big challenge we are facing ahead. Like uh, if you are involving the rack pickers, then we cannot privatize the waste management schemes. So when we more into the rack pickers or more into the cleanliness of the town, we process it for private agencies. So the mixing of or managing the rack pickers and the uh, private solid waste management uh, concerns are really challenging. There are many places in India we are facing challenges on this issue. So we need to have very clear understanding on this. There are successful stories available regarding uh, the uh, optimizing the rack pickers in the process of waste collection and management. And uh, uh, I hope uh, I'm taking more time. So I'm just closing this right now, this moment. And the uh, sustainable practices in the department, we do some practices. Uh, I'll just share a few moments. Uh, we have collected flower waste from the temple and uh, we have processed uh, and we have given some training for the NGOs, especially the temple flowers. And uh, those are being processed and sold for uh, uh, temple prasadam as an incense stick. So that's one initiative we have done. And we have uh, avoided uh, uh, like multi-layer packings inside campus. And we are doing some risk assessment uh, with the multi-layer plastics. Few of my students are working on it. Uh, uh, we replace that with the terminalis katapa leaf and the teak leaf. So those are best uh, replacements. And they have a lot of nutrient values in it. So it is worth to replace the multi-layer plastics uh, plates with the uh, existing uh, leaf material and one more thing like uh, when you are using toothbrush we are uh, running two campaign right now one is brush collection other one is pen collection pen collection most of the pens are uh, called as refill but most of them are not refill so we use and throw pens are there so we have collected all the pens and uh, uh, 
uh, we are replacing them with uh, paper pens, which we collect the old calendars from the university that can be uh, sourced for making a pen uh, from an NGO. So they are making pen and we are replacing that just for awareness purpose. These are all very, very small efforts. And for example, brushes and toothpaste. Toothpaste comes with the cardboard. So there is no purpose of cardboard. Honestly, we are creating waste on that cardboard purpose and uh, the tube, we can replace that tube and toothbrush, you say, the head is different part and the brush uh, handle is different part. So we have three type of materials, nylon and polypropylene, I guess so, and rubber part in it. So like uh, every person use three brushes per year and if Pondicherry is concerned, 10 lakh population. So obviously 30 lakh brushes create in every year. So if you consider down the line, uh, 10 years or five years, we have create, we are creating huge amount of brushes alone. So uh, individually, we have to look for waste generation rate, at least 40%, 30%, some target should ask, target has to be achieved and has to be worked out. Accordingly, we have to have uh, business creation. There are provisions given by the government, that is GSDP, Green Skill Development Program, through which they can give capacity building and uh, MSME is also there. We have uh, Atal centers, so we can expect more uh, waste related entrepreneurs and uh, the EPR has to be properly initiated. That is how we can connect the entire supply chain. I hope uh, I have justified for the five minutes being given to me. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, sir, uh, for sharing the, the work that is being done by you and your uh, university. And this particular, um, the high difference thing, we, we every one of us see uh, on everyday basis, but we fail to recognize or acknowledge the, this on daily basis also. So thank you for sharing and highlighting this. Moving on, uh, I would like to invite uh, Ms. Anjali Agarwal, uh, she is a project manager at Waste Warrior. Ma'am, uh, since Waste Warrior uh, has been working in this uh, space since 2012, I would like you to share your observation about the work done by Waste Warriors and how we can raise awareness regarding the environmental disasters, along with how we can build a culture of environment responsibility and strengthen the community involvement for waste management efforts. Sure, Varsha, thank you. Uh, can I have my presentation? Uh, or... okay. uh, do you want me to put it up, Anjali? Yeah, uh, let me try. If I can do, then I can. Uh, wait a minute. Let me know if I have. Okay, okay. Anna, you can try to put it up if you have the presentation. Yeah, can you be moved to the first slide? First slide. Yeah, uh, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you, Sphere India, for yeah. organizing such a platform, you know, to discuss about uh, one of the emerging uh, issue today. So my name is Anjali and I'm from Waste Warriors. Uh, let me give you a very short and quick brief about my organization. So we are an NGO uh, who is working in uh, two of the most beautiful states of Indian Himalayan region, that is Uttarakhand and Himachal Pradesh, uh, which are known as Dev Bhumi, and hence, uh, lots of tourists of, uh, from around the world visit each year. So one of such tourists was a lady named Judy Underhill. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, who was known as the garbage girl. And she saw the waste problem in India 10 years ago and chose to work towards it. She believed that there is always a solution. And uh, with her with efforts, Waste Warrior was born in 2012. Uh, next slide. So uh, as we can see, the entire issue of waste arises from a simple instances from our day-to-day -day life. Uh, like in this slide, uh, most of us consume chips or any other packaged products uh, and we throw away the plastic wrappers. So this uncontrolled and rampant practice leads to the situation uh, shown in the second picture. Uh, next slide. Yeah, so we can see the ultimate 
said outcome which is this and a simple unaware act leads to this uh, so this is the picture taken uh, taken by me only uh, while working on ground uh, where we can see ki kis tarike se gai ke pet se you know itna plastic nikla and kis tarike se wo birds ke andar itne sare uh, bottle caps hai yeah uh, next slide so we have our own theory of change so we believe that active participation of communities is vital for the sustainability of any solution and hence we strengthen existing community based institutions wherever possible and create new in, uh, institutions if necessary like in rural we go to sjs in uh, in uh, urbans we we go to rwa resident welfare associations uh behavior change uh, campaigns can be successful only when reliable services can be ensured which requires enhanced infrastructure for waste collection and processes uh local entrepreneurship ensures the value generated uh, from the systemic solutions remains within the local communities and hence accountable to the community so uh, there are also a lot of social stigma for waste as we know and we want to overcome this by providing a sense of identity among marginalized communities through uh, generation of dignified livelihoods uh, next slide uh, next uh -huh. so uh, with this theory uh, this is our solutions that is zero waste community activation dignified livelihood and advocacy uh, next slide so uh, as we know our local government like shared by every panelist are struggling to manage and increase volume of waste on day to day basis so we work closely with them to overcome this challenge Uh, we initiate and improvise aggregate collection. We help them in uh, setting up MRF, which is material recovery facility. Uh, we do targeted behavior change campaigns. We also engage ourselves in GPDP planning, where we build the capacities of PRI for better planning and better uh, better uh, budget utilizations. With Nagar Palika and Nagar Nigam, we are also involved. We also involve ourselves in uh, Satchita Sarvekshan planning and executions. uh we also do various uh, zero waste events uh yeah next next slide or some uh community activation that is from awareness to ownership we strives to uh, unite diverse communities for environmental initiatives and to create customized solutions we believe that there are always a few warriors who wants to be a part of the solution and we identify and encourage those warriors we believe that under right conditions and appropriate triggers this warrior within each one of us can be activated we do this by various ic activities which we can see in the slides uh, like art installation clean up space transformation education programs experiential learning programs we spread awareness on responsible tourism we do event based management through large scale public events such as uh, marathons festivals uh, we do public campaign like uh, rallies and nukkar natak yeah next slide this is also like shared by every other panelist that let we have to engage with different stakeholders and government and hence the need for advocacy arises from our field experience where we work we understand the policy bottlenecks to sustainable solution therefore we work closely with forest department as uh, most of our area falls under forest restrictions like corbet and govin valley sanctuary uh tourism department panchayati raj department state pollution control board uh, as you can see in the first picture which is of govin valley lake sanctuary where we transported uh, 2000 kg of dry waste from two villages only uh with the help of forest administration and pollution control board for the first time in the year 2022 and in total of 15000 cases of waste has been transported till date from the four villages and nearby tour operators from govin valley lake sanctuary to dehradun uh thank you next slide uh the cleaners of the environment are treated as people of the lowest strata of society as we all know and very few of us are bothered about their health hazard and entitlements so we work with them to improve their access to government schemes and various other entitlements 
we identify people from local communities and empower them to become agents of change we have developed a paryavaran sakhi model as well like you can see the lady in the e uh, e rickshaw um, in which rural women of diverse backgrounds came together to form messages to offer door to door collection services in rural areas and this model empowers women from rural areas with livelihoods and income generating opportunities uh, through collection of user fees and sales of recyclable Yeah, uh, next slide. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is the art installation you can see. Uh, this has been uh, made in Dharamshala. Anytime, if you can go to Dharamshala in Baksu, you can see this art installations, which attract tourists and uh, you know, like think and change. We give message. So at last, I just want to say that we are. we all can uh, do from our part to save the environment by proper management of waste by doing a small activity by doing a small change in behavior which is not at all hard by doing uh, by giving a small eco dan like using reusable bottles using um, reusable bags and all yeah thank you so much thank you so much ma'am for sharing the work and uh, the projects undertaken by waste warrior and sharing your experience uh, with the organization and the community now moving ahead since we have uh, all the panelists have uh, sh shared their observations and experiences uh, uh, are there any questions uh, that we need to address i just want I believe... to ask one question mm -hmm. yes um with the taker and sir uh in 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 his uh, slide he had written a regift uh, word like you know we have five are like refuse reduce reuse recycle but there was a new word which i saw regift i really want to know about it Yeah. Um, am I audible now? Yeah. Yes. See, uh, uh, this is again at uh, the concept level. We are thinking into uh, taking into the people. See, whatever gift we are uh, providing it, uh, just we are throwing it away as such. There are certain activities the gift has to be uh, uh, named like you know earlier what we do uh, earlier the covers which uh, we get it. Uh, we use the letter, and again the same cover will be used. Just we have to put on lab and reuse covers, so that save the trees. Mm -hmm. So that is how uh, we used actually. It was the practice earlier also, ten fifteen years we have used that. Similarly, this kind of things we should uh, do it as such, so that it can be popularized. Nowadays, uh, a lot of uh, materials are coming up with uh, um, upscale uh, materials and uh, reused material kind of things. This also can be. an you know, awareness site of thing that can be promoted so that is the idea yeah thank you sir that was really good yeah. uh, any more question for the panelist or from the participants uh i have one question if possible if allowed yes sir yes sir. Ah, regarding uh, Dr. Chippy Mo, she has mentioned about the integrated risk assessment. Uh, I would like to listen from her, like what kind of uh, risk assessment she has done. In case uh, she uh, working on that line, I'll be able to discuss further how to do for other dump sites. Thank you, Dr. Chippy Mo. Uh, Should we move now? Is it an analysis? Yeah. So integrated risk assessment. Uh, my research topic is related to disaster management in uh, in detail. But currently, I am uh, doing the risk assessment. That is uh, integrated risk assessment in the dump site related, uh, after the Brahmaburam incident. Incident, and which refers to the process of evaluating and analyze the various risk associated with. Infrastructure or location that lacks intelligent or smart uh, smart system, 
and when conducting the integrated risk assessment in dump sites, uh, like we, uh, you know, it happened only on 31st of uh, March, so we didn't get much of the time. In the time, uh, the several key steps that I, I followed is identifying the risk. That is, start by identifying the potential risk and hazards that may exist in the dump site. Then it was accessing the probability and impact. That is, to evaluate the likelihood and potential consequences of each identified risk and consider the factors uh, such as historical data or industrial standards, expert opinions, et cetera. Then, uh, then the next one was uh, prioritizing the risk. That is uh, prioritizing the identified risk based on their severity and significance. This prioritization um, helps to allocate appropriate resources and attention to the most critical risk. And the um, next one was um, mitigation strategies. That is uh, to develop strategies to mitigate and reduce the identified risk. And the last one was um, emergency preparedness. That is to establish the emergent, emergency preparedness plans and response protocols to, uh, specific to each dump site. These plans should outline the actions to be taken in case of emergencies. Like in Brahmapuram, it happened all of a sudden and it was very hard for people to understand what need to be done. Uh, so I hope I have uh, answered your question. If there is anything else, you can uh, ask me in my LinkedIn platform, sir. Fine, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, ma'am. One. Uh, Okay, can I have one word actually? In fact, uh, our uh, Professor Sudalai's uh, presentation really it was uh, very interesting. And uh, one uh, question I have, uh, maybe uh, he can able to share, uh, but it is not a question, but it is a concern as such. See, uh, uh, when working for five years and 10 years, a lot of improvement and changes and the technology changes we bring in into the practice. But when you take off uh, this uh, um, uh, Puducherry, now uh, they have given a uh, 19 years contract for solid waste management. Uh, I really wonder, uh, 19 years of the proposal which is laid down, and 19 years they are not going to change any technology. How it is possible and how it works well, I do not know. That is one concern I have. And the second part is, uh, you, you, I saw your presentation, this uh, uh, essence uh, uh, making from the temple uh, flowers that I heard of other place also. It is very interesting. In fact, I will like to come and meet you, sir. Sometime he will uh, see that and definitely we can able to replicate because several times from we are working. So probably we will try to uh, replicate there. Yes, uh, that definitely we will take it up, sir. Commercially, it is available, sir. Pule one company is there. Okay. So they are the harbinger for this process. Actually, we have inspired from them only. Uh, then we have started and uh, we experimented it actually. Mm -hmm. So we collected uh, flower waste from the market. We have convinced the florists from the markets. Like uh, we have interactive session with a lot of market florists. And we found that more than 300 kg of flowers on a season day it is generated. We, a flower market is totally different from solid waste. On season day, we think that more flowers will be sold. Actually, uh, they procure more flowers and uh, sometimes uh, they pick, they, they raise the cost and uh, if it has not been sold, then they don't bother about selling it again. So they just uh, discard it. So likewise, we have rose and uh, uh, sambangi. These are the uh, uh, flowers which is very useful for us for preparing other uh, value added products. But the most troublesome is uh, the marigold. So marigold is not, it's not easy to process it. So that creates a lot of problems. Even if you allow that to compost, it don't get composted also. So uh, there are difficulties with the nature of waste also. The characteristics of waste play a major role in dividing, in, design, in devising the value chain. Uh, so I mean, value addition for any products. Good, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. We will look into that, sir. So one concern, sir, like nowadays, flowers are not having flower, flower uh, garlands are not having flowers. Most of the plastics, are there in the garlands. So maybe uh, another uh, issue we have to really concern because uh, most of the marine environment, we have uh, flower base and cloth also. Uh, when temple waste is concerned, we have huge amount of uh, plastic waste clothing. And that has not been concerned so far, but it is going to be a very disaster in especially the uh, water-based uh, environment. Yeah. Thank you, thank you.
I guess this has uh, turned out to be an interactive platform for experts to collaborate further. And uh, this uh, rightly proves that we have had a fruitful discussion today. And just to sum up with the uh, key points of discussion for today's uh, topic, uh, I would like to summarize that like all, major, all, all the panelists had a consensus on a few topics. Uh, one is the need for collaboration, uh, need to have a collaborative approach or PPP models or the advocacy appeals between uh, stakeholders so that uh, we can have, we can work uh, together on uh, such topics. And then the second one, uh, like uh, Mr. Jyotish and uh, Chitty Mohan ma'am also have shared that the lessons learned uh, needs to be incorporated while devising the strategies of disaster management. And um, like uh, Sudhilai Sol have uh, shared uh, uh, like one person's uh, toothbrush usage can create so much of uh, toxic waste uh, so that we can take an insight from today's uh, session and we can incorporate this day in our lives. And the last one is the community participation and the community activation that is uh very important and integral for bringing out the social behavior change or the grassroots level change that we are uh, attempting on so these were some of the uh key discussion points for today's session and uh, now i just want to thank all the panelists and the participants for coming and having uh for sharing their experiences today uh, I thank you all on behalf of Fair India, and I would request Hannah to uh, present the vote of thanks. Uh, thank you so much, Varsha. Like we are way over on time, but still, uh, Mr. Atunuru Veera Reddy, sir, do you have any pressing questions? I see your hands up. Okay, good evening to everyone. I'm from the Andhra Pradesh. It is a very important subject what we have today. And also, I'm thinking that, is it audible, madam? Yeah, yes, sir, it is you're audible, audible, sir. You're, you're audible, yeah. sir. If you can finish it in like one, two minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, it is the most important thing. But everything is with connected with the commercial manner. Okay, last 15 years back, the, um, this one, uh, power production uh, units, uh, their uh, uh, coal generation, fly ash, they, they, that is for the waste for the, uh, the generation plants. And this is useful for the cement plant right now. And they are using, they are producing the PPC, uh, Portland, Portland cement, like that. So one citizen connected with the waste management. So my interest is, I am telling you people, the research, waste management research is required. Here uh, in the cement industries, what happens? The power generation units, fly ash is the waste, and the fly ash is using for the cement production. So the, there is a commercial connectivity is there. So it is finally, I am telling you, what are the waste management is there, the uh, waste is there, the, uh, that there is a research is required for the connect, uh, it, it has to be commercially connectivity. Okay, this is my idea. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. So you have uh, brought up a very important topic on research. Uh, so uh, since we are like out of time, I would quickly wrap the session up. So the discussion that took place today was very insightful, and we hope that the knowledge gained will prove valuable in the future. On behalf of uh, Spear India Academy and also Hand in Hand India, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to all the speakers, the panelists, the moderator, and all the people who have participated in our webinar. We hope that the insight shared by our esteemed speakers was thought provoking and definitely all the speakers who shared your expertise and it was very informative and we could hear perspectives from different sectors like academia, NGOs and also like, you know, in policy making so we could uh, understand the subject from different angles. So I would like to extend our heartfelt, heartfelt thank you uh, to all of you for spending your valuable time in this event. Uh, the session collaterals and uh, you know the report will be sent to all of you in the coming days. Uh, please 
uh, like you keep a track of the Spirit India Academy events. Our next session uh, is happening on the mental health of frontline workers, which is happening on 19th of May. So um, thank you, everybody. And it was a wonderful session. Thank you all. Thank you so much on behalf of Hand in Hand India. We thank you so much and for your sincere effort. I think it's the right time we can have a, a collaboration with all like-minded people and take it up further. Thank you so much for everyone to participate in this. Thanks a lot. Thank you.